I'm wearing the same outfit as last time because I'm filming these in order. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for joining me in this next episode. I'm really excited to see who leaves next. <laughs> or rather, interested. I'm interested to see who leaves next. Summer's left, which was a sad moment, but also, you know, it makes sense. It's their time to leave. Something else I would like to mention is that this video is sponsored by Chateau Laurier, which is a series that I am in. Their second season, or our second season, just dropped, um, where my character Violet Moore is introduced. I play this maid who is a very opportunistic um, girl from the country who's new to the big city and she comes to work as a maid in the Chateau Laurier, which is the sort of center point of this series. It takes place in 1920 when the chateau was created and built and it was a lot of fun. We got to actually film it in the real Chateau Laurier in Ottawa, which is like this gorgeous building with these amazing detailing, gorgeous, um, uh, architecture. I cannot believe we got to be in there and film in it because it's just like us, us in this little web series that we got to make and it was a lot of fun and I met some really cool people and also got to film in a period piece which I've never done before so that was really fun. If you're interested in watching it it's got a lot of the same themes as the next step similar to like the drama of it though it's a bit more adult because there is a bit of a murder mystery element to it. There's also like a lot of like drugs and Drugs, the thing that I always talk about in my in the last series, if you know, you know. But yeah, it's a really great it's a really great show. I'm I will I can't really do a very good job of describing it, so I'm just gonna drop the trailer for it right now. See the bride has been found. Have I not done well, Father? There's nothing that can be done. You are the head of this family now. Not so hasty. There are other heirs. The last will. Oh dear. I was foolish to think it could be something else. Daddy, I love you. I wish I could make you believe that. Low manners, lower morals. Le Chateau is half mine. You must be at. He's been waiting for you. We can't do this. You're a married woman. I have nothing. You need to control your wife. You already have your knives out. A woman of poor breeding would slap you across the face. Oh, I'm surprised you don't. This ends now, Sabot. I am no Mrs. Muchmore. The hour is coming, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. But what of the man who killed the killer? What has become of this world? If you want to check it out, it is on Apple TV in Canada, the US, the UK, and Australia, on Vimeo On Demand, Google Play, and YouTube Premium in Canada. It's in the US, UK, and Australia on Amazon Prime and Google Play. It's worldwide on Vimeo On Demand and YouTube Premium. So if you are interested in watching the show, I would really appreciate if you guys just go check it out. And if you like the drama of the next step, you'll enjoy the drama of this show too. And it's, it's a bit more adult, so like, Perhaps you're in your early 20s because maybe you were a fan of me from the next step earlier on and now the next step's a bit too young for you but you want to maybe watch something else that's kind of like drama but it also has a lot of romance and, and the actors are phenomenal. I'm not tooting my own horn, just saying I'm grateful that I got to work with them. Now let's get to the episode. What you all came here for. Oh, I forgot. I always used to do this previously on the next step. I'm leaving the next step. B Troop, you're going to nationals. We have no nationals and I have no plan. That kind of sucks for the people who wanted to go to nationals, but now they can't because the rest of the team didn't want to go. That would I would be kind of cheesed about that because it's like, I want to go and I worked hard to be in the better troop or like a troop or the more, like my technical ability is at the level where I am now finally able to be in a troop and yet now I can't compete. I'd be a little bit peeved. I mean, unless they've competed already in the past then it's like, I guess they've gotten a taste of it. So it's like spread the love, sure, fine, but still. Hey buddy. I don't know if you guys could hear Sabo wailing in the background. Yeah, I know. I was I was gonna let him out in the hallway, but then I just played for him with played with him for a bit, and then I haven't let him out yet. I'm tired of feeling sorry for myself. Putting all my hope in a new day is the way I I can be, I can be what I want to. I can be, I can be what I want to. We get knocked down, 
I think um, putting as much dance as they possibly can into every episode is the smartest thing because like these guys are dancers first and so when we watch them do the thing that they're really good at it's really impressive like watching Briar like doing all her tricks and making it so seamless is in, is amazing to watch and I'm glad that they put it in I'm praying that she's not the one who leaves next <laughs> because she, her dancing is just so incredible. Hello everybody, it's Tiara Bling here and I'm counting down the worst moments in dance mania history. At the number one spot, surprise, it's the next step's Alice in Wonderland routine. If we don't find a way to change everybody's mind about this team, we are never gonna go pro. Okay, and then there's the new mission, got it. I was gonna say, I'm like, how are they gonna incorporate a troop? So Rochelle's mission is to bring back the good name of the next step. I love how they used, what's her name? Um, the YouTuber, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find her. I love that they used her, that's so smart because she's such a fan of the next step and she does all these like videos. Ariana, that's her name, mocking Ariana. I loved uh, that they used her because she's such a great like on-screen personality, like YouTube person and she also does all these like next step BTS stuff, which I think is cool, or like not BTS, but commentary stuff. I haven't watched many of her videos, but I m remember stumbling upon it when I did the reaction series like two years ago. Don't worry, they are still top of my worst list. But you guys have suggested that I give a super special shout out to the worst of the worst. Rochelle. Uh, maybe we shouldn't watch this one. Oh no, we're watching this. She's literally singling me out. Dude, when Briar goes into dagger mode it's so interesting to watch i wish she would do that more often i think i think there's a way for her to bring that into every because it's when she's trying to be nice and sincere that like she doesn't bring in that same kind of like power behind it if that makes sense i don't know how to describe it but when briar goes to that like uh, I need to compete, like I need to win, when she brings that into her work, it's really interesting to watch. So, that's all I'm saying is, Briar, if you're watching this, which I highly doubt that she's watching this, but Briar, if you're watching this, do more of that. I think it's cool. <laughs> you know what, why don't we forget about this whole Tiara Bling thing for a little bit and practice that duet we've been working on? Maybe if I record and post our dance and Tiara Bling sees how great we are, she'll back off. You're right, let's go work on that duet. Yeah, Briar just has this, this like, sass to her. I don't know how to explain it. What's the word I'm looking for? It's just like this, um, it's the competitive need to win. When she incorporates that in her work as an actor, it is really interesting to watch because you're like, okay, you think you, you see yourself as a winner. And, and it's interesting and it's compelling and I want to I want to follow your story and see if you actually get there. But there's also this like unrestrained, like I will win. That is also a bit concerning because it's like, well, you're not considering the fact that maybe there's some flaws in your plan, you know, but it's all interesting. It's all, it's all setting up an interesting story for her. I don't know if we have what it takes to go to national. Look, look at what Izzy's wearing right now. That sweater is so cool. She has the best wardrobe. I wish we could do that. We probably could have done that, like dressed a little bit differently to our... But I guess like once your character wardrobe is set season one, it doesn't change much. Because they want you to have like the uniform. I, is from what I, I think that's what it was. That sweater is cool. I wonder where, she, I wonder where they got that from. Every other team going to nationals has won regionals too. We didn't even win our battle against A Troop. We literally got handed that win. This is the worst pep talk ever. Ethan, I was literally thinking the same thing. Worst pep talk ever. <laughs> what are you doing? Maybe this is worrying the dancers a little bit, but that might be a good thing. Because they should be worried. We have a lot of work to do. Sounds like something Riley would do. <laughs> She would be like, hey guys, so we're going to nationals and this is great, but here's all the reasons why we're gonna lose. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I'm in the costume closet looking for the dance captain diary. My theory is that that's definitely wardrobe department and that they just put stuck a camera in there. Smart, because there's costumes everywhere. Actually, this is totally the wardrobe department because I'm pretty sure this is where we shot the Christmas special as well. We shot the Christmas special in the middle of them shooting this season. Wait, no, that's not true. 
All I'm saying is that this this looks familiar like I was there for a fitting. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Are you looking for anything? I mean, if it's something important, I'm happy to help. It's actually very important. I'm looking for a book. A book? It's green. Okay. But that's all I can give you. I need to find this diary soon so Rochelle and I could figure out what's next for the team. It's nice to have help. I knew it. <laughs> Obviously because it was planted there. But yeah, I like it. I like the dynamic. Post it? What are you talking about? Well, yeah, once we post it and tag TR Bling, she'll finally be able to see how great we are and stop posting me comments. Okay, so this is what I mean by adding the competitiveness to this. Right now, Briar is playing the moment of like, I just can't wait for this to, to happen. But if she added the edge of she she'll finally see this and then and then she can and then she'll back the fuck off. Like obviously don't swear, but you know what I mean? Like there, there's just more fire in her that she then she's leading on in this scene, and I like it more when she adds the fire because it's more interesting to watch. It's going fine. Good. Good. The studio has a history of excellence. It's important that we keep it going. <laughs> Rehearsal is not going <laughs> I love that line. This studio has a history of excellence. It's important that we keep it going. <laughs> That's a great line. That's so much fun. <laughs> the studio has a history of excellence. It's important we keep it going. <laughs> One weak link and we might blow our chances of winning nationals, so. But hey, if you have confidence in the team, then I have confidence in you, so it's all good. That was a bit of a backhanded, like, you know, one week link, and it's out. But if I, if you have confidence, then I have confidence. It's all good. No, no offering of support of like, what can I do to help? What, what do you need from me? Like, do you need anything from me? It's just like, no, you better be good because if you're not, <laughs> we're doomed, and the reputation is kind of on your shoulders now. So don't mess it up. No weak links. I have confidence in you, though. Like. <laughs> So passive aggressive, slightly, and also a bit like not supportive. Anyways, a bit toxic. It's a bit toxic. <laughs> the book is called The Dance Captain Diary. It's been passed down through A Troop for years. Every dance captain through TNS his. I know him. I definitely know him. I've met him before. He's a dancer I know. He I competed against him or something growing up. But he's so much older now that I just don't recognize him, maybe? Where do I know you from? It's gonna kill me. <laughs> I don't really feel like that's H-Troop's journey anymore, though. If it has a bunch of information about competitions, then I feel like B-Troop should get a chance to read it. It doesn't work like that. Besides, like, we're the ones going to nationals, not you. You know what? I'm gonna go look for this book somewhere else. Kenzie? That was a turn. <laughs> Yeah. I am here to officially announce that the next step has been hashtag danceled. <laughs> the one thing that the next step does every season without fail, they always throw dance in a word and combine it with another word. You're danceled. Only the next step could pull that off, really. Hey, uh, sorry, I'm late. Anybody see that danceled thing? Yes. yes! I'm sensing some tension here. It would be really hard to play a character who is not smart. Hi there, hello, Brittany editing here. Um, I just had something to say and then I completely forgot what it was. Oh, that's what it was. I watched this one part of, of Liam, Liam, the actor Liam, doing, like, he comes in and he says a thing like, Hey, have you guys heard of this, that we're danceled? And everyone's like, yes! And he goes, I'm sensing some tension here. And I called him stupid, and I feel like that's not. <laughs> I said that they that they they wrote him kind of dumb, because that wasn't the first moment. That wasn't the only moment where he was. He's like kind of slow to pick up on cues. Was sort of like the thing. And I remember when I met Liam, I'm like he wasn't. He wasn't dumb. So I'm wondering. I was wondering why they wrote that way. Anyways, this reminds me of um. Me sitting here watching my reaction to something and now I'm reacting to my reaction. 
is so Bo Burnham, it's crazy. Do you guys know Bo Burnham? He's the he's the YouTuber, he's an actor and like artist and like he's very against social media and stuff. And he made this incredible piece of art in uh, lockdown during COVID. This massive, like uh, beautiful um, musical that was about him being stuck inside as we all are in this one tiny room and like this like mental health spiral that he was going in into or going whatever and he was writing all these really incredible songs welcome to the internet anyways check it out if you haven't it's fucking incredible he does this bit where he's reacting to something he's done <laughs> and then he's reacting to his reaction and reacting to his reaction to his reaction and it keeps going and going and he keeps having something to say to correct himself on he keeps being like oh actually sorry this was i said this but I actually meant this and oh I said that when I was commenting on that thing actually and it's literally what I'm doing right now which is the irony of this is hilarious is that what irony is I don't know it's so funny so true and like maybe a bit sad but whatever I'm here and I'm committing to it um now I'm going on a weird tangent I didn't mean to go on but the whole reason I came to, to film this was because I wanted to clarify that I don't think that, that that actor is not dumb, but the scene that they gave him, like a lot of the stuff that they give him is just him being a bit more slow. And I just thought, oh, that must be so tough to do. Or at least because I, and then I went on to say that because I'm, I'm smart. I'm a smart person. <laughs> and I have a hard time complimenting myself, but I also have a hard time, um, which that's a whole other issue we're not gonna get into. I have a hard time playing dumb because I'm not dumb. And so when I when a scene is put in front of me and I'm like, oh, I have to like not, it's like, it's not that the character is dumb, but it's that like, uh, oh, it's clear that I need to not see something in this moment that I'm obviously seeing. My, it was the trick that you could do is what my acting teacher said, which was like, oh, you can, um, you can, you can just do long division in your head while you're doing the scene, and then, and then that can be the, uh, and then that'll create this dichotomy of like, oh, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm also not hearing what's happening in this moment so i have to clarify it it's just because you're distracted kind of sounds like adhd <laughs> which i absolutely have um anyways it's a new development in my life that we're also not going to get into back to the reaction you found it <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry for walking out on you don't even worry about it i know you're looking for this book for michelle but i think you'd make a really good dance captain oh i know <laughs> <laughs> Cute. There's a message from Miss Kate. It says sometimes a new path can seem scary, but even if it causes a lot of drama, the hard road is usually the road worth taking. I like that, Miss Kate. A little throw in to Miss Kate. Fun fact, I just recently audited an acting class three weeks ago, something like that, and Brie was there, and it was great to see her, and yeah. Uh, she says hi. <laughs> I love that. That's so tr I love that. Sometimes the harder path is worth taking, even if it causes the drama. Um, but it's worth it. So then we kind of know that's setting up, obviously, that Kenzie's probably going to make the difficult decision to, like, become dance captain over Cleo to go to nationals with. That's my theory. The cold wind, it blows, and I don't think it knows. I know a dance captain should believe in their team, but how can I when we missed out on our only chance to prove ourselves? She's so caught up on this proving herself thing, which I understand. <laughs> Again, this a lot of these themes are kind of like highlighted in Riley as well, because Riley is the epitome of worry. <laughs> because I am the epitome of worry. Ben and I were talking about this the other day, how I was like, this is a big, complicated idea that exists, that has existed for me throughout my entire life of like this feeling like I need to prove myself for something, prove myself for something because I feel like if I don't prove myself that I'm not worthy of that thing or I'm not worthy of whatever. It's, it's a lie, like it's not true, but uh, it's something that I have always struggled with. 
and on this show, and being Riley also too, it was like that was ingrained in her character because she was always worrying all the time. She was always stressed out about things like, what about this and this and this? And oh my God, these are all the things I'm worrying about. The one thing I wish Riley got to was like, I'm, I'm actually feeling good. I'm feeling confident, like confident in herself, comfortable in her skin. I wouldn't have been able to play that because <laughs> I'm not comfortable or I wasn't comfortable in my skin. Like I feel like over the past five years of my life, I've really kind of been more comfortable in my skin. So if you're someone out there who also struggles with this like need to prove yourself, it gets better. If you if you commit to the rewiring of that idea, over time it gets better. Take the harder path, huh? Don't just sit with the easy one, which is accepting the fact that you feel like you have to prove yourself all the time. You don't. You don't have anything to prove. Just be you, do what you love, learn, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, keep trying new things, and then you'll be fine. All right, hello, I'm back. If you watched last week's episode of Riley Reacts to season eight, episode one, which you, if you haven't, you should watch it. I'll link it. Uh, I had this technical issue because I filmed all of these in one go and I hadn't looked at the footage after I filmed it. I just like filmed them in batches. I filmed, a, I filmed three, so the, who knows, maybe next week, I'll have to interject like this again. And I'm just watching this now and the same freaking thing is happening where the visual is like jumping. So it's like a, it's like a clip of me like this. And then, but the voice is still talking and then I'm like, the, and then the voice is still talking. It's really annoying and it's not enjoyable to watch. So I'm jumping in to like <sighs> recap what I was saying. Two things happen here. First of all, we see a special guest comes in. Nick? Known as Michelle. Michelle, aka Victoria Baldessera. Anyways, and then I also complimented her dress because I really liked it. I thought she looked really cute. Oh, that's, and then, oh, and then Victoria, Michelle comes in and goes, I'm only in town for a little while, but I had to stop by to see the new bubble tea shop. And then I go, oh, bubble tea shop. I knew it was something bubble tea, tea, because it's like, I, I was trying to figure out the the name of the of the hangout spot that they're currently in. Uh, I was trying to figure that out last week in last week's episode. Again, watch it if you haven't. And then Victoria just said it, this the new bubble tea spot, which I don't know if that's the name now that I'm watching this again. I don't know if that's the name of the thing or if it's just like, it's just the bubble tea spot. What else did I say? Bubble tea something. I also said, I love how they threw a little former Miss National soloist in her like character thing that comes across the bottom of the talking heads because she was Miss National Soloist in season one. We were like freaking out about that because she was the new girl. And then we found out that she was Miss National Soloist the previous year. And we were like, oh, so that means she's really good then. And Emily hated that. So good, such good drama. And then I wasn't really listening. And then I heard them say Riley and I was like, what did they say about Riley? What is she up to? Well, I'm so curious. Miles asks, Is Emily with you? I could do with some advice. A bit of studio business. And then uh, Michelle's like, No, she's not. She's actually in New York City setting up some meetings and visiting with her sister Riley. And I was like, Oh, damn. <laughs> I wanted to hear more about Riley. I wanted to hear more about what she's up to. I, all I remember from how she left the show was that she decided to go to business school because she wants to be a business lady. And then we have Nick say Nationals, Nationals is right, right around the, the corner, corner for a second time this whole season. And I figured maybe I'll do like a counter somewhere, which now that I think about it, I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> Nationals is right around the corner. Second time it's been mentioned. Um, let's move on. Nick brings this problem to Michelle. I'm a little worried about B-Troop. Michelle gives him the solution of the challenge. We actually allowed dancers from other studios to come and fight for a spot on the Nationals team. The two dance captains and Miss Kate all decided who made the team and who was cut. This was like probably the writer's story tactic to bring in new characters because it's like, how, how do you have new characters come in? And so you can do it through B-Troop, of course, because they already had B-Troop there, but then they have B troop re audition with new dancers so they can bring in new characters and then have everybody be whittled down to like the new version of B troop and then the new version of A troop because then you can have more characters in general, which means more story opportunities and whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said how I loved how, you know, Rochelle and Kenzie are having this intimate moment together. You're not alone in this and you shouldn't feel that way. We've always got your back when something goes wrong. 
or things get a little messy. Even if you get the team dancelled. It's quiet, but they don't hear a fleet of people coming in. <laughs> or Rochelle doesn't hear a fleet of people coming in behind her. Because she's just so engrossed in the moment, I guess. And then we, should, we just turn around, it's just all of a troop. <laughs> But that's another one of those moments where you have to like do the thing of the act for the actor of like okay i have to focus on this and not on what's ha actually happening behind me because if i do that if i focus on that then i can i'll hear it and then so you have to like shut that part off and then i also said that we're in rochelle's thoughts obviously so like we can't hear it because she's very distracted and we're with her so that's why we also the audience can't hear an entire group of people walk into a room and not make a sound like we're just with her and that's why hi buddy yeah, I hear ya. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's another night I'm not giving you attention. What's on your tail? This morning I woke up and found Sobble's litter was so such a mess, I had to clean it out entirely. And I put his lid on the floor. Like, if this is the lid, I like flipped it upside down, which is a mistake, because then Sobble peed in it, because he had to pee. It was in the mor- was, he had to take his morning pee. Yeah, buddy. I know. Meow. Anyways, he peed in the, his litter thing, and then I saw some- I keep catching litter bits on his tail now, because I had to clean him out because he peed in the litter thing, and then he peed all over his paws, and I was like watching him do it, and I was like, he's gonna walk all over the apartment, there's gonna be pee everywhere. So I picked him up after- as soon as he- I let him finish. He finished peeing, and then I picked him up, grabbed some cat shampoo that we have, and just like shampooed his paws, and then I had to like shower <laughs> after, because I got pee all over me, it was a fun morning. Then we find out this juicy piece of information. Tiara Bling already knew that Atrip wasn't going to nationals. Do you think someone's leaking inside information? Like, is someone at the next step a mole? And then, and I made the prediction that it's probably summer. That the mole is summer. I bet it's summer. Like, she needs to somehow get back into this world. The reason why I thought it was going to be summer is because Everyone that's there, Summer's or Rochelle's probably gonna like try and figure out who did it. And it's gonna be none of the people she actually thinks is who is in the studio. It's gonna end up being the person who's not there, which is Summer. Because we've forgotten about Summer. She left. She's gone. Bye bye. No, she's not in the story anymore. But then she comes back. <laughs> so that's why I thought Summer. We need to find this mole. Once again, it got choppy all the way till the end so here we go final thoughts um i think the mole is summer as we just discussed and who the fuck is pete i don't know who pete is <laughs> i i know pete like i know him from somewhere i couldn't figure out where and maybe he was in an earlier season that i watched that i reacted to and i completely forgot maybe that's what it is go watch bo burnham special it's freaking great oh go watch chateau laurier watch chateau laurier sorry i keep pumping this freaking thing watch chateau laurier it's such a great show. And again, if you were a fan of The Next Step, now you're in college or university or even in high school and you're you're like, yeah, I liked The Next Step when you were on it. And, or even now, you're a fan of it now still. But you want something a little bit beefier, maybe. Maybe you want something with a little more teeth to it. A little more drugs, a little less dance. You know what I mean? <laughs> Watch Chateau Laurier. I'm gonna put all the information in the description in case you missed it of like where to watch it. Just, I'm gonna try and get some links together and put them down there so you can just click the link and go watch it. Also, uh, if you haven't already noticed, I'm posting every single Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern time for the rest of this year. I have decided I'm committing to this entire season. There's 27 episodes in season eight. I'm gonna be reacting to every single one of them every week, every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern Standard, Eastern Daylight time, Toronto time, Canada. Dear Lord. I will be reacting to the next step, a new episode. So please subscribe if, if you like what you see and, um, comment anything literally whatever you want it helps the algorithm uh like the video share with people if that if you so wish yeah and thank you for watching this was this has been fun